भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Today we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 11, um, Text 1 and 2. We will read the summary first. The Childhood Pastimes of Krishna. This chapter describes how the inhabitants of Gokula left Gokula and went to Vrindavana and how Krishna killed Vatsasura and Bhakasura. When the Yamalarjuna trees fell, they made a tremendous sound like that of falling thunderbolts. Being surprised, Krishna's father, Nanda and the other elder inhabitants of Gokula went to the spot where they saw the fallen trees and Krishna standing between them, bound to the Ulukala, the wooden mortar. They could find no cause for the trees having fallen and Krishna's being there. They thought this might be the work of some, some other asura. who had met Krishna on this spot and they inquired from the playmates of Krishna how the whole incident had taken place. The children properly described how everything had happened but the elderly persons could not believe the story. Some of them however thought it might be true since they had already seen many wonderful incidents in connection with Krishna. Anyway, Nanda Maharaja immediately released Krishna from the robes. In this way, Krishna at every day and every moment displayed wonderful incidents to increase the parental affection of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda, who thus felt both surprise and joy. The breaking of the Yamala Arjunas was one of these wonderful pastimes. One day, a fruit vendor approached Nanda Maharaj's house and Krishna gathered some food grains with his little palms and went to the vendor to exchange the grains for fruit. On the way, almost all the grains fell from his palms, only one or two grains remaining. But the fruit vendor, out of full affection, accepted these grains in exchange for as much fruit as Krishna could take. As soon as she did this, her basket became filled with gold and jewels. Therefore, all the elderly gopas decided, thereafter. Thereafter, all the elderly gopas decided to leave Gokula because they saw that in Gokula there was always some disturbance. They decided to go to Vrindavana, Prajadama and the next day they all departed. In Vrindavana, both Krishna and Balarama, after finishing their childhood, began to take charge of the calves and send them to the pasturing grounds, Gocharana. During this time, a demon named Vatsasura entered among the calves and was killed. and another asura in the shape of a big duck was also killed. The playmates of Krishna narrated all these stories to their mothers. The mothers could not believe their children, Krishna's playmates, but because of full affection, they enjoyed these narrations of Krishna's activities. <coughs> Text 1 Shri Shuka Uvacha गोपानंदय श्रुवा द्रुमो पत तो रव तुकुश्रेष्ठ निर्घात भयशंकता सुखदेव गोस्वामी कंटिन्ूड सुखदेव गोस्वामी कंटिन्ूड ओ महाराज परीक्षित वेन द यमल अर्जुन ट्रीज फेल ऑल द कौहर्ड मेन इन द नैबरहुड hearing the fierce sound and fearing thunderbolts went to the spot so please repeat after me bhumyam nipatitau tatra dadarshuhu yamala arjunau babramuhu avignaya तत् अविज्ञाय लक्ष्यम पतन कारणम भूम्यांग निपतितौ तत्र भूम्यांग निपतितौ तत्र 
ಭದ್ರಮುಸ್ವಿಷುಜುನ ಭೂಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ನಿಪತಿತೃಶುರ್ಮಲಾರ್ಜುನ ಭ್ರಮುಸ್ತಿಜ್ಞಾಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ಪತನ ಕಾರಣ ಭೂಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ನಿಪತಿ ದೃಶುರ್ಮಲಾರ್ಜುನ ಭ್ರಮುಸ್ತಿಜ್ಞಾಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ಪತನ ಕಾರಣ ಭೂಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ನಿಪತಿ ದೃಶುರ್ಮಲಾರ್ಜುನ ಭ್ರಮುಸ್ತಿಜ್ಞಾಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ಪತನ ಕಾರಣ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂಪತನಕಾರಣಿಪತಿಶೋಜುನ ಭೂಮ್ಯಾಂ ದ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ನಿಪತಿ ವಿಚ್ ಹಟ್ ಫಾಲನ್ ಅವಿಜ್ಞಾಯಸ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ಆಲ್ದೋ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಪರ್ಸೀವ್ ದ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಹಟ್ ಫಾಲನ್ ಪತನ ಕಾರಣ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾಲಿಂಗ್ ಹೌ ಕುಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸಡನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅನ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಬೈಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ there they saw the fallen yamalarjuna trees on the ground but they were bewildered because even though they could directly perceive that the trees had fallen they could not trace out the cause for their having done so purport considering all the circumstances had this been done by krishna he was standing on the spot and his playmates described that this had been done by him had krishna actually done this or were these merely stories this was a cause of bewilderment ಪ್ರತಿಕೃತೀಗರ 
Andeham Shri Guru Shri Atav Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsta Shri Rupam Sagrada Tam Sahagana Raghuna Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Nalita Shri Shaka Guru Vaishnava Bhagavan Tine Smarane Hoi Vigna Vinashan Anaya Shri Hoi Nijabam Chitapura Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam topmost Vedic literature Veda means knowledge this is the topmost knowledge this is the knowledge to take us out of illusion. The topmost devotees are in illusion. It's described here. They're bewildered. In the material world we are bewildered when we come to spiritual knowledge. We should have clear vision. Tesham aditya vajjnanam prakashi param. Just like the sun rising makes everything clear and here we find that if we can go to the topmost level of god realization it means to think of krishna as an ordinary person and krishna says in bhagavad gita avajananti mang urha manushin tanamashritam people who think I'm just an ordinary human. They're murhas, fools, rascals. Nahang prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavit. Mudho, again he uses the word murha. Mudho nam nabijanati mamabhyayamanutu. What's the last line? No kamama jamabhyayam. They don't know. Foolish people cannot perceive me as I am, covered by my illusory potency they don't know who oh, I am, I'm the supreme inexhaustible so how are we to understand this at all should we try to understand it or should we just relish it as the Rajavasis are relishing the pastimes of Krishna we can also do so if we think Krishna is just an ordinary little boy. That can have <coughs> uh, untoward consequences if we're not on the platform of the Rajavasis. We are warned not to imitate. <clears throat> Otherwise, we may... It's quite common here in India that Mothers, they think of their young, especially if their son is young, they like, they call him my Gopal, like this. They like to think like that. <clears throat> and when he's naughty, as little boys almost inevitably are, they think, ah, oh, it's just like Krishna. Not exactly, not exactly, but, uh, the same mood is there. <clears throat> the Vatsalya, Vatsalya Bhav, parental affection. They take pleasure in seeing the <clears throat> child grow. It's described here in Bhagavatam, seeing how his teeth are coming out. He passes stool and urine here and there. They, they don't get upset. They just clean it up. Nowadays they use diapers in India, in the cities. I don't know about in the country, but previously just kids would poop here and there, that's all. And didn't wear any clothes either until they're about seven or eight years old. Boys and girls, they'd all run. When you were a young child, you were running around naked, right? At least till five. At least till five. What about you? You're a city boy from the big city. You don't know. Huh? 
Yeah, just running around there. What do you need clothes for in this weather anyway? Uh, <clears throat> that's uh, that's the, <laughs> the decency you need, but not, not for warmth, that's for sure. <clears throat> you have enough of that. <clears throat> so what's going on here? They're bewildered, but that is another kind of bewilderment, that is yoga maya. How do we know that? How do we know? Because the Bhagavatam is explained to us through the Acharya Parampara. I just came to learn that the Gopal Tapani Upanishad, which is about as personalistic as you can get, is also commented on, apart from Vaishnav commentators, is also commentated on by Mayavadis. And they twist it. They have a, they're awarded by the Lord's external potency, the extraordinary ability to uh, turn black into white and white into black and just turn everything and, and make it, everything is impersonal, they want to make, even grossly. Uh, yes. Yeah, they, the most respected commentator on the Bhagavatam in India when Srila Prabhupada was present was a complete Mayavadi. And he'd explain it like that. I think I said that last time I was here. I've said it several times. His ashram is still there. He'd explain it like that. You can do, of course, with the Bhagavatam, you can do with anything, even you could probably find an impersonal interpretation for Isha, Parama, Krishna, Satyadananda, Vigraha, Anadira, Dir Govinda, Sarva, Karana, Karana, they'd probably pull out some Panini rules and so and turn it upside down, inside out. But we understand through the Acharya Parampara, through intelligence, yes, Shastra, is meant to be approached with intelligence. It speaks to our intelligence. That's why we can't speak Shastra to animals. They're also jivas, but they're in such a condition that they can't begin to understand all these things. And persons who are like animals, or animal killers, as Purikshit Maharaj says, we'll find at the beginning of this canto, they also can't understand. And persons who are trying to enjoy this material world, they can't understand. Persons who are fed up with this material world, Stop trying to enjoy it. They glorify the pastimes of Krishna. Upagiyama, by the parampara system. <clears throat> to hear which is very pleasing to the mind. Who will not do so? Glorify this Lord who is glorified in the topmost verses. Only someone who is a killer of animals, which means butchers and also people who are killing their, op their, their opportunity of human life by <coughs> <coughs> taking to impersonal commentary. So, that, so it is explained by our acharyas. <coughs> so yoga maya is explained in Gita, in Bhagavatam, in other Shastras. Sometimes the, the functions of Yoga Maya and Mahamaya can seem to overlap. And sometimes the wording can even overlap. <clears throat> so we have to understand through the Acharyas who make everything very clear.
the bewilderment of the Rajavasis at Krishna is because they didn't accept a guru to explain. They're just relying on pratyaksha. It, it, it says here that we, we've seen that the, child, the, the trees fell down. And we see little baby Krishna, a little bit of Anuman there also. A little baby can't make trees fall down, so it can't be a little baby. Same thing with the, uh, the cart, shakat, shakata asura. The cart suddenly fell to pieces, violently. And how did that happen? The boys, the ch children in the present, they said, well, Krishna kicked it. No, it can't be that. can't be that. So they couldn't accept because they're on the platform of pratyaksha. We only believe what we see. That's not a very good platform for, and it's absolutely not a platform for making spiritual progress, spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding begins with understanding that we don't understand and we have to, or, or, or there is a spiritual platform. It's not just, material isn't everything. There is a spiritual platform. Uh, there is existence beyond what we simply see and speculate about. But that existence, to begin to understand it, we have to understand that what is beyond our immediate sensory range and what is beyond the ability of our mind to immediately understand, beyond our logic, that is a chintya inconceivable. So we can't understand. And once we accept that it is inconceivable, then we can understand. How did Krishna pull down the Yamalajuna trees? He can do that because he's God. He doesn't look like God. How could he even pull the wood and mortar in the, in the first place? It's a big heavy thing and he was tied to that so he couldn't go anywhere. So even pulling that is is unexpected to what to speak of pulling the mortar between the trees and uh, anyone who studied this in physics or engineering can think that if you apply pressure at the bottom of a tree it's uh, it's going to have to apply a huge amount of pressure if you put it higher up the tree may break but if it's strong enough, it would be better to hold, to put pressure at the top of the tree. <clears throat> so they didn't believe it. But for them, that is the highest platform because they've gone beyond wondering about who is God and they're simply loving him. But for us to understand all these things, we have to have it explained for us. Uh, there's the Aroha Pantha of trying to apply our own knowledge, our own ability, our own brain power. Even to interpret Shastra, we may accept Shastra at, at a, some level, superficial level, but then try to interpret it through our own human intelligence. Uh, we may even accept that the Vedic statements are infallible. But even then, if we think we can understand simply with our intelligence, we're not going to understand it. Simply by applying our intelligence. Intelligence is required to understand it, but we have to take aid. We have to have that intelligence guided. I've many times given the example from my own life of being first in mathematics class, being first of all uh, exposed to calculus. And the teacher writes it on the board, 
it looks like some big squiggle with some numbers and a line and I haven't got a clue what it is. And I could look at that for the whole of my life and I couldn't work out what it is. But I did have confidence that it has some meaning and I will be able to understand it, but the teacher has to explain it. Which he did. And I could understand it. And now I forgot it all. But I know it's not just some squiggles. There's something there. <laughs> so, there will come points in studying Shastra where we become bewildered. It may be. But then we have to accept that's due to our own lack of understanding. It's not that something is wrong with Shastra or something is wrong with the understanding that's given by the Acharyas. Note the plural word. It's not that someone just pops up and says, hey, I got a great idea how to explain this. It may be that some revelation is there to an exalted devotee, but they, they work within the framework of Vaishnav Siddhanta, Gorya Siddhanta, Madhva Siddhanta, Valab Sampradaya Siddhanta. But if we come across something and it doesn't seem to make sense to us, and we try to work it out all by ourselves, then we're in trouble. It may be that even it's explained to us and we still don't understand. That happened with calculus for me. It took a little time before I could get my brain around it. <clears throat> it wasn't instant to understand it. <clears throat> And there may be, we also have to accept that there may be things which we'll never understand. Why did Krishna leave the Rasa dance? It's explained, but, or uh, tomorrow is Rama Navami. Why did Rama kill the Shudraka? The word is given, Shudraka. Why did he abandon Sita? explanations are given. They are quite feasible, logical, within the framework of understanding, but still it seems very hard, very painful to think how Ram could abandon Sita. However, if we start to think that Ram is wrong, or the Acharyas, they're just trying to get him off the hook. It's not really true what they're saying. Then we start to become offensive to Rama and to Sita and to the Acharyas and to Shastra. This kind of skepticism based on pride that, well, I know better, I can understand better. And then immediately we're on the path of fall down. It may not manifest grossly, but it is a fall down to think that we know better. Then you have to take a time machine and go to Rajadham, which is not possible. You can't enter that and go and tell the Rajavasis, no, no, you don't understand. I know better. He's God, actually. You don't understand. Actually, there are many places where they do understand and they say, they'll say, yes, he is, yes, you are Bhagavan. Nakalu Gopika, Nandano Bhavan. What's the next line? Antaratma Drik. Akila Dehinam Antaratma Drik. You're not just the son of Mother Yashoda, but you're also the indweller in everyone's heart. The gopis say to Krishna. Nanda no Bhagavan. You're not only the son of Nanda Maharaj, but you're also the indweller within everyone's heart. So they know, but it's not that important to them. You may be God, but what are you doing? Come here. <laughs> That's their attitude. 
is not to be imitated. Uh, we are at the platform of trying to go up to him. How do we go up? We're down, we're fallen down. We, there's a method, the help comes down from above. Help comes down and we can take it and we'll be pulled up. Avaroha Pantha. Knowledge comes down. We have to approach Krishna with all humility. Shastra with all humility. We have intelligence. We're not supposed to throw it out. We're not supposed to have blind faith. But at the same time, we have to pray to understand. As far as Krishna reveals, we can't demand. Knowing that there are many topics which are beyond our intelligence, which is after all highly limited. Our experience is very little. We accept, yes, the gopis, the gopas of Vrindavan, they're all highly exalted. But if we want to analyze in detail and try and do some psychological analysis by modern psychology or whatever, we're going to get into trouble. We, we don't have the prerogative to do that. We shouldn't do that. shouldn't even try to do it. If you want to analyze <clears throat> so many things about Srila Prabhupada, why did he say this, why did he do that? But you have to do in terms of Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Why is he doing? He's delivering the message of Shastra as received through the Acharya Parampara. That's why he's doing. If I can't understand it, that's my lacking, we should think. We should have implicit faith that Shastra is perfect, the Acharyas are perfect, Srila Prabhupada is perfect. I'm not perfect. As soon as we start to think I'm perfect, then we're fools. <laughs> By nature we're imperfect. The Jiva is imperfect. In as much as he's He's not complete as Krishna is. Purna, we have this word Purna. Krishna is Purna. That word is translated into English as complete and also as perfect. We can never be as complete or perfect as Krishna. But he can give perfect knowledge to his devotees. And we have to receive it from them with all humility, despite our disqualifications. How can we understand? There are so many things. How can we understand? We have to understand not by exercising our brain to try and work it out by ourselves, but to receive knowledge from the Acharyas uh, and then apply our intelligence to that. Srila Prabhupada stated in a lecture on Sri Ishopanishad, all methods of acquiring knowledge can be divided into two groups. One group is called Arohapanta, or research, the inductive process. And another method is called the deductive process, or Avarohapanta. The knowledge coming from the Supreme Source is called Avarohapanta. And the knowledge which is being sought after by using our imperfect senses is called Arohapanta. The ascending process and the descending process. By the ascending process, we can never come to real knowledge. That is not possible because our senses are imperfect. So the Aroha Pantha, climbing up method, means we're trying to climb up, get up 
by our own intelligence. And that can come also in study of Shastra. We may study Shastra and try to understand it and bring our... But if we do that without accepting the Acharya Parampara, then we're going to bring our misconceptions. If I don't understand it, there must be something wrong. <laughs> that thought is there. They haven't explained it properly to me. We may think like that. I may think in the class, the teacher's no good because I can't understand. But it's our lacking if we can't understand. Not the teacher's lacking. Mm. There are limits for everyone. It's not that everyone can study calculus. A three-year-old child can't. Maybe if they're very bright, you could start at the age of seven or eight. But you'd have to teach them, first of all, basic arithmetic, and then algebra, and then maybe you could go to that. Usually they do geometry, trigonometry before that. But anyway, you have to have some, some background understanding. <clears throat> then you can begin to understand. Again in mathematics, you're taught at a certain level. There's no possibility of a square root of a negative integer. It makes sense, because as soon as you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. And then, so you can't have a square root of a negative integer. So that makes sense. But then when you get up a little higher, they'll tell you, we're going to work with the square root of minus one. That's inconceivable, but it's necessary in mathematics at a certain level. It's inconceivable, even, even in numbers. And the, an important part of understanding which is missed by the, the materialistic philosophers and scientists is the understanding that there will always be things that we don't understand. However much we advance in science and knowledge, there'll always be things that we don't understand. There'll always be, however much you solve mathematical puzzles, there's, there, are, there are always so many mathematical puzzles which the mathematicians, the biggest brains and even the computers can't work them out and then all of a sudden someone's sitting in the bath and has his eureka moment and gets it. But then when you work that out and then you get into it more, you'll find there's something else about it inconceivable. And it goes on like that. In the world of theoretical physics, that's really the right word, theoretical. Because there's all kinds of theories. and every, Everyone's dreaming up theories and none of them work. Some of them work partially, but none of them work fully. So they're just, for the last hundred years, they've been trying to work things out in the field of physics, and they just can't do it. They, there's, they spend their whole life and die making up the, the, theories about the nature of uh, very small things, microscope, less than microscopic. And they make some progress, but still, whatever progress they make, they can't work it out. And they say, we're working on it. You can work on it, lifetime after lifetime. But you won't find out everything. And there's no need to either. There's no real need to know what's happening at the super subatomic level. No need. Well, if we do that, we could make some kind of transport system that would transport us to Mars. 
immediately. Okay, what's the benefit? <laughs> but there's old age and disease there also, if you happen to go there. And missing the, that's it, missing the point. So, we should accept there is a spiritual dimension which we can have access to, we should have access to, but the price for entering it is utter humility, which for the conditioned soul is foreign to his nature. <clears throat> to think that I really don't know and I'm basically a fool. I'm here in this world, I don't know why or how, but it, it's no fun. What's going on? And you can speculate in so many ways as to the nature of being. But the beginning is to accept there is a spiritual dimension beyond that which we can immediately perceive. And then we have to inquire, atato brahma jignasa. We have to inquire into that. We have to know then how to inquire, who to inquire from. It takes a lot of punya to even come to this stage and to get someone who can explain all these things to us. <clears throat> and it may be that in the course of explanation we become dissatisfied. We may think that, oh, I don't like this explanation. Or, how, just recently I was looking at this, someone asked me, how is it that the Guru is birth after birth? And you start to think about it and it becomes inconceivable. And then when Srila Prabhupada was asked about it, he said, you don't worry, you just go on doing your service and then you'll get it. But if you become stuck up on this point, then you don't get it. <laughs> if you stay to the point of serving Krishna, then you'll remain in Krishna consciousness and your guru will be the birth of the birth. Exactly how, that's up to Krishna. <clears throat> but if you get stuck at that point, no, I, I can't understand it, therefore I don't have faith in it or my guru can't explain properly, then you lose the connection. Then he's not birth after birth. And you say, see, I was right. I'm a worm in stool and I was right. The guru is not there. You know, his guru, is, guru is guru as long as you treat him as a guru. If you treat him as an ordinary man, then he's an ordinary man to you. That's like Srila Prabhupada said, installing the deities in Los Angeles, Rukmini, Dwarkanath, the small deities before the day. Srila Prabhupada said, if you think <coughs> this is a brass made idol, then this will remain for you a brass made idol. But if you think this is Krishna, then Krishna will talk with you. <coughs> so is, is reality Relative to our perception, another big question of philosophers. In one sense, yes, but in the absolute sense, no. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but it's multifaceted also. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but not to the Vrajavasis, or not in the same way that we should see him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So if we say, yes, it's true, and if we say, no, it's true, depending on who says it. But if I, sitting here in the material world, say, no, it's not true that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, <coughs> then we're in trouble, and we can't understand it. So it, it does become a little complex. But we shouldn't become bewildered. That's the point. We shouldn't become bewildered because Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but sometimes he plays as if he isn't, or he's not what we think he should be. 
I can't imagine God having a half lion, half man form. Brahma thought, I, I can't imagine God running around like a low class cow herder without any shoes on. <coughs> I know who God is, he's my father, he's the huge form of Narayana. This can't be God. That's coming up just in two chapters, right? We have Brahma getting bewildered. <clears throat> so we may get bewildered. What is spiritual? What is material? Spiritual can look like material. The deity looks like material. He's fully spiritual. How do we understand that? You can make a chemical analysis, if you like, and it's going to be material, right? Uh, the, the deity is cast out of different metals. What is that? Copper, zinc, tin, different metals. But then you don't get Krishna consciousness. You don't come to the spiritual platform. And it can be explained also, Krishna, he's, he can take that form to accept our service. And so many people have experiences <coughs> of Krishna, but then they don't see him as a brass-made idol. <coughs> With material senses, we can't touch, taste, smell, feel, or hear <coughs> that which is spiritual. So how come... How could Duryodhana see Krishna? How could so many demons see Krishna? Well, in one sense, they didn't. Because they saw him as material. Then his hand became material? No, but in their vision it became. With his mercy, with his spiritual hand, he cut off the head of the washerman in Mathura. So is he spiritual? Is he material? He's both. Material is included in spiritual. <coughs> Ultimately, he's all spiritual. Ultimately, everything is all spiritual if we have that vision. We have to see at our level through the eye of Shastra as explained by the Acharyas it's a different outlook altogether. <clears throat> Even in Shastra, it may sometimes say things which seem to make Krishna material. For instance, we have in the first canto of Bhagavatam, <clears throat> Kutavan Kilakaramani Saharamena Keshava, Atimartyani Bhagavan, Gura Kapatamanusha. Krishna and Balaram, beyond the platform of death, played their pastimes, uh, being very deep and subtle, profound, and cheating man. Kapata means cheating false, deceptive manusha. So he's a cheating person. That's what it says. Elsewhere we have so many names. Maya manusha, illusory man. That name is given for Krishna. So if we want to take it literally in that sense, then uh, <coughs> we become bewildered. Of course, in the same verse, Kapata Manusha, we also have Atimartyani. They're above the platform of death. And we say, well, why did Vyasadev write like, write like that? Well, maybe to bewilder you. <laughs> we have to understand through the Acharyas. <clears throat> we have to have that faith. If we have faith in our own ability to work everything out, then we're in trouble. <clears throat> Same thing, we have to study Shastra. We are coming in the line 
of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada has mercifully brought the gifts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the whole world. <coughs> it may be that, there, well, we know for sure there are many ways to explain Shastra except those of Srila Prabhupada. But we are here today discussing, as if understood through, from Srila Prabhupada, there are many other commentators on Bhagavatam. We could understand through Madhva Siddhanta <coughs> or Mayavad Siddhanta. But there are some differences there which may bewilder us and we don't really need to know anyway. We here have the uh, faith that whatever Srila Prabhupada has given us is complete and perfect for us. I was wandering in the ocean of material existence and Krishna kindly sent me Srila Prabhupada. So we accept him as Krishna's gift. Krishna Kripa Sri Murti. <clears throat> he has explained Shastra in so many ways. We may say, well, Madhva explained it differently. Or Ramanuja explained it. We know that. We know that already. But we take what Prabhupada has given and we're satisfied with that. And we don't try to say that, well, this is not right. Or there's a better way to understand. And then we're on the mental platform. <clears throat> if we in any way try to minimize Srila Prabhupada or think that now I've read so many things, I know better. We're in deep spiritual trouble. Okay, it's good with Prabhupada himself recommended that you read the commentaries of the previous Acharyas. That's not for everyone. Because most devotees have neither the time nor the inclination nor the eligibility to do so. Spiritual eligibility. <clears throat> so if you can, we find that's quite common now in Iskon devotees will give a talk. Uh, they'll explain mostly in terms of what Vishwada Chakravati is, especially Vishwada They like to do that. You can do like that. But don't relegate what Srila Prabhupada has given and think, well, now, now I know a lot better. I have to save others by telling them how Prabhupada didn't really know so much. That underlying attitude, I've, I've discovered something new and better, it becomes very dangerous. So we're happy to learn that the devotees in Vrindavan they're bewildered on seeing the Yamalajuna trees fallen. We worship their bewilderment. We understand why they're bewildered. They're bewildered out of love, not out of envy. There are different kinds of envy. There are different kinds of bewilderment. One out of love and one out of envy. So it can be that we also become envious to Srila Prabhupada. He very mercifully gave us all these Shastras in very simple language. Otherwise, these commentary, the Shastra and the texts, they were written for highly learned in Shastra and Siddhanta, highly learned devotees. They're not meant for everyone, actually. They were to be explained to the common people by persons who've gone very deeply into the understanding. And Srila Prabhupada has amazingly made that available to all of us in straightforward language. It's, it's, the, mo it's the, the most amazing thing in the history of Shastra commentation, how he's been able to do so. 
But then if we study a little Sanskrit and we think, oh, now I understand, actually, oh, it's too simple. We have to make it more complicated. And then we lost the thread. Hare Krishna. I'll finish there for now. Any question? No. All right then, ladies. No. All right. Hare Thank you.